Page 972. 972. Change it to 472. Page 472. The Lord's our rock in him we have, a scepter in a time of storm. The fear of God never yield in time, a scepter in a time of storm. Oh, please, to the rock and a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. My peace is to the rock and a weary land. And he's a sufferer in a time of storm. Our city valley defends by night. A sufferer in a time of storm. So fierce is the love, no fools are cried. A sufferer in a time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A weary land, a weary land, my Jesus is a rock. And a weary land, and it's accepted in a time of storm. The raging storm may around the sea, accepted in a time of storm. We'll never leave our sacred sea, accepted in a time of storm. For Jesus is the rock, and a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. That would be first John chapter two, verse seven through eleven. And it reads, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because when God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we are also to love one another. Amen. I read you the first John, chapter 4, 7 through 11. Let us all see.
Good morning, church. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious, loving, merciful, Heavenly Father, author of life and giver of every good and perfect gift. We come humbly bowed before your throne of grace, thanking you for the blessing of this day, for life, health, strength, and soundness of mind. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for blessing us with your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who hung, bled, and died on the tree of Calvary's cross for our sins. We come out before you, O Lord, at this time in a special way, as we pause from our rapid pace of life to give all praise, glory, and honor to you. Amen. To set all our carnal cares aside and focus on your goodness, your grace, your mercy, and your love. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will empower our spirits right now. Just revive us with the spirit of thanksgiving and joy for all you have done for us, for what you're doing right now and all you promise to do in the days to come. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will help us continue to work together in unity and in love. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will help us to always strive to do your will. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to direct our minds, direct our thoughts, and help us, Father, to serve you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will place your mighty arms of protection around those who are on their way here, so that they may arrive safely. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will wrap your healing arms around all the sick and the shunned. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will forgive us of all sins committed against thee in thought, word, or deed. And as we go about our Christian walk, may you help us to always have pure hearts and clean minds and live as you would have us to live. Amen. Heavenly Father, may you be with our speak of the hour, Brother Eldridge, as he comes forth shortly to give us the bread of life. Continue to bless him with health and strength. Bless his family. Help him to recall all that he has studied in preparation for today's lesson. May he preach your word according to truth, with courage and conviction, and without addition or subtraction. Heavenly Father, may you continue to bless the book Jason congregation, bless our families and loved ones, bless our visitors in person or online. May they be inspired and uplifted by our worship service today. May some hearts be pricked today and may some souls be saved. In Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Page seven forty-five. Seven forty-five. Come on yourself. Page seven forty-five. Come on yourself in the side of the road. Come on yourself in the side of the road. Come on yourself in the side of the road. And he is the Lord. And he is the Lord. Jesus is the Son of God. Humble yourself in the side of the Lord. Humble 
God who has blessed us. And we are to be mindful of the fact that we had not been to God. We have not had this opportunity. So we are thankful. We are thankful to God. Thank you for God. We are thankful to you. Visiting with us this morning. I want you to know who you are. I just guess we appreciate your presence. Because we know you could have gone anywhere to worship. And that's whether you are visiting with us in person or online. Because we are thankful that you chose us to assemble to worship God. And we pray that our worship will be a source of encouragement to you. And it will inspire you to continue to serve God. But if you have it, um, obey God, that it will motivate you to obey the God of heaven. We serve a mighty good God. Amen. I want to use a sing with you this morning. Um, and seven six. I shall not believe. It's like the tree planted by the I say no. Nine hundred and seventy six. <clears throat> yeah. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, I 
You mean it's the love. Let us love one another. Love is of God. And everyone that loves it is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. And God is love. And this was manifest the love of God for us. Because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sin. To love. If God so loved us, we are also to love each other. John sets forth the love of God. And John, in his writing, you will see if you read the Gospel of John, and then the three letters here that John writes, you did not talk about. John was a proclaimer of love, but the love of God. John always talked about how God loves us and how we ought to love each other, and then how we ought to love God. He says that we ought to love the Lord, we ought to love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength. It's how we should love God. And so he, so John talks about love. John is, the, I guess you call him a love apostle, the apostle of love, because he talks so much about love. And he set forth here the love of God. And what John gets across is how God loved us. I'm mindful that we all, I'm out of man, have an understanding of love. You know, especially this month, mm -hmm. that was time we think about love and the people we love. And we have different love. We have, you know, 
But then we have the love that we have for our children. The different love. And then the love we have for our family. Different love. And then the love we have for you all. And then God comes on the scene, teaches a different kind of love. Love. As John says, love that, the, the love that God has for us is different. It is what's called an adopted love. It's the highest form of love you can have. It's not a sensual love. Affectionate. It's deeper than that. John says, we ought to love one another for love, verse 7, is of God. And everyone that loves is born of God and know God. And if you don't love, you don't know God. He says, in verse 9, in this, in this was manifested, a demonstrator, the love of God toward us. John is writing to the Christians. He said, this is manifested, the love of God toward us. Because that God sent his only begotten son to the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And send his son to be the propitiation or the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Then he says, love is, is, is telling the Christians he says, the love is, you know, God so loved us, and we are to love one another. It is the love that God has for us as Christians, but it is the love that God has for mankind. Yeah. John 3 to 16, it says, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. It is God who loved us enough to save us. Love us enough that he was willing, as John said, to give his only begotten son. And if you think about that, it, it is God who gave his only begotten son for us. I don't know, for us might be a little bit too generic, but if you just kind of say for me. You see, God sent his son for us, for you. Take your place. And I am mindful of the fact that if God loved us like that and demonstrated that love for us, it ought to motivate us. It ought to inspire us when we understand what God did for us. You see, God, I'm, I'm mindful that God sent his son to die for me. And if you think about it like that, 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 that you think about it all the time, that God sent his son to die for you. God had his, his only, it said, this is what John said, 
his only begotten son. Now through Jesus, through that son, coming to this earth, we, be, we are begotten of God and we become sons of God. But before, before God sent Jesus, Jesus was his only begotten son. It wasn't like God had a bunch of sons and I'll just send one of them. Send his only son for you and I. Then, and you think about this and say, but why would God do that to me? John said, because God is love. God is the very essence of what love is, of God by love. See, I love my wife, my wife loves me. We, we have a mutual love. What's so different about God's love, agape love? God loved us. Even when we didn't love him. God loved us. Even if we don't love him. You ever notice that, you know, it's, it's like, you know, you ever love somebody and they, and, 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 and they don't love you back? Now, some folks, they like that. That's what they want. But hopefully that's not you. Most people, most people to continue to give their love Got to love somebody's. Got to love back. What is what is, what is it? Teddy Pendergrass said, "It's so good when somebody loves you back." Mm -hmm. That's 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 us. But here is God's love. God loved us, even if we didn't do anything for Him. Go with me, Ephesians chapter two. Ephesians chapter two. Paul writing to the church at Ephesus and he talks about our condition before Christ Jesus. He says in verse number one, he says what? And who had he quickened? Who had he quickened? Who were dead in trespasses and we sins. We were dead in trespasses and sin. It's our condition before Christ. And, then, and if you read verse two and three, he Further expounds upon that. Verse number four says what? But God. But God, to tell you how undone we were when we walked through the course of this world according to our own will. We did what we wanted to do, like we wanted to do with whoever we wanted to do, as much as we wanted to do, and we didn't care about God. And yet God loved us. He said, the way we were, he said, but God, we were dead in trespasses and sin. But verse four, he says again, what? But God. But God, what he said. Who is rich in mercy. Who is rich in mercy. And what? For his great love. For God's great love. Wherewith what? He loved us. Wherewith he loved us. Not just love, God, but the great love that God had for us. What he said. Even when we were dead in sin. Even when we were dead in sin. Go ahead, read. And quicken us together yeah. with Christ. Quicken us together with Christ. What he said. By grace you are saved. By grace you are saved. And you know, you hear this, is that we are saved by grace. It is the unmerited love that God gave to man. Love that we didn't have to, we didn't have to deserve it, or we didn't have to merit love from God. And God just loved us. And I'm, I, I'm mindful of you ought to think about it all the time. Why would God love you? Why would God love me? He says, because God is love. Oh, you got to hear that. Is that God loved you not because of you? By grace are you saved. What that really says is that you didn't have to do anything and God loved you. Romans chapter 5, verse number 6. 
You didn't have to do anything. And, and, and so here's what John said. Because John talks about God's love. And John says, verse 17, here in is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as it is, so are we in this world. Verse 19 says, we love him because he first loved us. It's a reciprocated love. You love me, I love you. We love God because God first loved us. But here's what Paul tells the church at Rome. He says, verse number six. For when we were yet without strength. We were yet without strength. In due time. In due time. Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for the ungodly. For the ungodly. For the well, scarcely for a righteous man. Scarcely for a righteous man. But one died. One died. Yet for adventure. Yet for adventure. For a good man. For a good man. Some would even dare to die. Some would even dare to die. But then he says what? But God commanded his love. And what you'll keep hearing is that what we, we should not, or we didn't deserve, or we should not have gotten love from God. And but the way we were, the condition we were in, we should not have gotten anything from God, but God still loved us. And you keep hearing that Paul said to John said, but God, see, we were not deserving but God, had it not been for God. It says, but God, what he says, God did. Commended his love. God demonstrated his love. It is God that demonstrating his love. What he said? Toward us. Toward us. It's the, it, it is God wanting us to know that we are loved. I, I, I wish I can impress upon you just how much God loves. I mean, the fact that God would send his son to die for you, nobody would do that. You see, scarcely for a good man. If somebody was good, some would die. Pay attention. You know, if, if, if you were really worthy based on who you were, maybe, just maybe somebody might die for you. But not in the condition we were in. Nobody would die for us. And you think about it, your worst, the worst person you've been in this life. You take that moment and think about God love you even in that moment and send his son to die for you. Now understand the great love. Paul says, verse 8, that the God commended his love toward us in that what? While we were yet sinners. While we were yet sinful. And what he said. Christ died for us. Died for us. So it reads. Much more than. Much more than. Being not justified by his blood. Good. That idea that God died. God sent his son to die for us. To demonstrate his love for us. It is. It's not just that God, you got to hear this. It is not just that God loves us. You know how you can tell somebody you love them? You tell somebody you love them? Especially from a husband and wife. I can tell my wife all day I love her, but she expected more than that. She want to hear that, but she expected more than that. You see, God sent his son. And, 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 and the Bible says that, that Jesus was wounded for us. Everything that Jesus went through. So if you hear me die, he died on the cross. Go with me, Isaiah chapter 53. He, he, he died on the cross for us. In Isaiah 53, and verse number five. It just gives you an idea of, of, of what Christ Jesus did for us. 
Verse number five, the Bible says what? But he was wounded for our transgressions. It says, you know, he died on the cross, but it wasn't just that he died. He was wounded for our wrong. Three. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised for our wrong. So the kind of person we were, he was wounded. He was bruised. What it says? The chastisement of our peace was and upon him. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Three. And with his stripes we are healed. And because y'all know they beat Jesus. They didn't just crucify the God. They persecuted him before that. With the stripes, they beat him. Listen, the soldiers came to Jesus. And even while he was on the cross and already suffering, they said, let's break the leg. Let's hurry up. Speed up his death. But even before he went to the cross, is the way they whipped him. They beat him. He was wounded for our chastisement. He was bruised for us. They sped up on Jesus. They mocked Jesus. Everything he did, he went through for us. Now, here's why God did it. Because God is love. Amen. All you got to understand is that, is that the great love, Paul said, wherewith he loved us. Don't think about your love and, and my love and how we love. Think about how God loves. And sometimes, and sometimes I just tell you, we got to get out of our own way so we can really know what God wants. Because sometimes we can't even see what God wants because we're too busy thinking about the way we are. But don't think about how we love. Hear how God loves us. Amen. The great love where we my love us. It is Jesus on the cross. Go with me to first, uh, first Peter chapter 2 and, and, and verse 24. Y'all time now, listen, listen, it is God who what one of the days John get, comes across with. See, all of us deserve to die. Mm -hmm. Ain't none of us so good that we ain't never did anything worthy of death. Because of our sin, we should have been put to death. But instead of God killing us, he sent his son to die. That's love. Paul says, Romans chapter 5 and 8 again, he says that God commended his love, demonstrated his love to us. First Peter chapter 4, but he says this. Who his own self bear our sins. Talk about Jesus, who his own self. Bear what did he say? He what? Bear our sins. Bear our sins. In his own body. In his own body. On the tree. On the cross. Go ahead and read. That we. That we. Being dead to sin. Dead to sin. To live unto righteousness. Live unto, it's how we should live because of that. Mm -hmm. And he says what? By whose stripes you were healed. healed by his wounds. We are healed by his stripes. And I think about love, y'all. Listen, I tell you, and I tell you, ain't nobody gonna love you like God. Amen. No, so many people be disappointed because of people, so the way they're supposed to love. And you know, somebody commit to you and say they're gonna love you, and, and then they don't keep their word. And somebody commit to you and say they're gonna love you, but they, they only love you for a short period of time. And, but even when they love you, they don't love you like God. Ain't nobody gonna love you like God. See, here's the thing I want you to know this morning. God will never let you down. Amen. And God will love you and you'll never break your heart. Amazing God will say. God will love you and he'll never disappoint you. 
shouldn't we want that kind of love? Amen. Here's what God is doing, y'all. God is modeling. What God was doing when it came to love is God was modeling for us. He was modeling love for us. How to love. But it's John chapter 4. But John chapter 4, verse number 7. First John 4, what we read. Here's where all of this about love. Here's what, here's what John starts with. He says, what well, again in verse 7? Beloved. Beloved. Let us love Christian. Christian. What he said? Beloved. Beloved. Let us love one another. What God really wants is to demonstrate to us how to love. Then he wants us to take that example and use it in our lives. Let us, what he said? Let us love one another. Let us love one another. For what? For love is of God. He says, because see, love is of God. And everyone that what? Love it. That love it is born of God. Is born of God and knowing God. Because you know how to love. Listen, but if you don't know God, you don't know how to love. Because yes. all we know is how we know how to love like we love. And a big part of how we know how to love is how the world has taught us to love. Oh, uh, it's natural for me to have affection and love for us, for another, for a female. But how do I love the male? Oh, you don't hear me. See, I gotta have a different, how do I love somebody that I don't have a sensual love for? I look at the model of God. He says we ought to love one another. That's what, that's the, listen, it is the message of God. It is the lesson of God. God said, listen, we ought to love each other. It's really what God wants. But listen, instead of just saying, God love each other, and we just do it the way we want, God actually tell us how to love. I want you to love the way I love. Go with me to first, first Corinthians chapter 13. First Corinthians chapter 13. Paul writing to the church. Y'all now listen, the message of God. Because what I don't want you to, to, to miss is God wants us to love one another. But that's the church. That not, that's not just congregation. That's the church. Right? It's Christian. We are love the people of God. And so, how do we do that? God demonstrated for us. First John, in First John 1, verse 7, John said, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light. The blood of Jesus cleanses from all unrighteousness. John talks about how God forgave us of our sin, how Jesus took our sin. But God will do that over and over and over and over again. It wasn't just that God forgave us, but God will keep on forgiving us. It just, you think about God's love. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 3, Paul talks about if, 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 if I do all these great deeds and I don't have love, he said, it doesn't profit me anything. If I can do everything that, I mean, if I can just do something, that, that, that should actually foster a great accolade from everybody. And I don't have love. He said, ain't worth nothing. Even if I'm willing to sacrifice my body, I'm a, I'm a, if, if, if I'm willing to do some great thing and I don't have love when I do it, listen, what we do, he says, got to be motivated by love. It's not just what we do. It's got to be motivated by love. 
And so verse number four, he says what? Turn to something flow. Say, Lord, listen, listen. I, I, I don't have time to tell you all of what, what, what the message is here, but listen, it is patient. It is, it suffers long. It is God who suffers long with us. It is God who patiently and suffering long, waiting and hoping you get it right. You do better. It's God. Now watch y'all. Love, suffer it long. Can we just give up on people? Just, just, I don't fool with them. Because it's something I did, or something somebody did one time. Oh, y'all don't hear me. It's Christians, y'all. And then all of a sudden, I don't fool with them. See, God demonstrated for us how we ought to love. Listen, the world will actually teach you if somebody do something. that you don't like, that disappoint you, or whatever, leave them alone. Don't love them no more. But how many times have we come to God and ask God for forgiveness <laughs> and expecting God to continue to love us? Love, suffering, what he said, Suffered long. It's suffered long. Go ahead and read what he said. And it's kind. It's kind. And it's what? Love and it not. It doesn't envy. It ain't jealous. It's not what? Go ahead and read. Love bones is not itself. It's not about me. Uh, it's not self-promoting. Now, when you read that, what you ought to hear is that just the opposite. Love doesn't bond itself, but it lifts up others. Christian, my best, I have to say this, my, my best surroundings should be with the people of God. Amen. Because they have my best intent at heart. Mm -hmm. That the people of God should love me and not be so critical of me of every time I mess up. Give me some patience. I'm going to straighten it up. Yeah. See, love doesn't fall itself, it's not about me. If we say what love says is, it's God who loved us enough to do something for us. Listen, if I can love like God, then I can stop thinking about me and do something for somebody else. Yeah. Keep reading, Vincent. It's not puffed up. It doesn't puff up. Does it get the big head? Can I just tell you this? It's not about the getting the big head. Because all of us, all of us stand in need of forgiveness from our God. And ain't none of us so great that we ought to think we more than what we are. Amen. Love ain't puffed up. Listen, <laughs> somebody patting you on the back. I just said, Somebody pat you on the back. Don't go thinking you more than anything. Love is not puffed up. I won't, I, I won't get into it, but the, uh, this whole idea of it, it, well, I just have to say, look, listen, I don't care who you are, and, and, and this is just a, this is just reality, even among preachers. Man, I am amazed that folks. 
that think they something because they can free. And you ain't nothing. And had it not been for God, had it not been for God, in everything we do, we should keep lifting God up and not ourselves. Yeah. And the way you lift God up is to promote his people. Not your own self. Love is not puffed up. Go ahead, read. Does not behave itself unseemly. Does not behave itself unseemly. It's about how we behave toward others, y'all. Go ahead, read. Seek it not her own. It doesn't seek its own. It ain't about me. Keep reading. It's not easily provoked. It's not easily provoked. Yeah, you and I, I, I just pause. Listen, listen, listen. It's not easily provoked. If you have patience with people. Y'all, can I just tell y'all, this is real, that, that, that we're trying to save the world. And so we have to be patient with folks. And you can't just be easily provoked that every little thing sets you off. Especially, y'all, can I just say, especially among ourselves. We can't do anything God wants because we can't, every time we try to do something, we got all kinds of friction going on. Oh, you gotta hear me. The thing that helps us be able to function as a unit for God is our love for what we have for each other. Amen. That's how the church functions, through love for each other. I'm not about me, it's about you. And you're thinking it's not about me, it's about you. Go ahead, Bessie. Think it no evil. It thinks no evil. Don't think the worst of folks, but the best of folks. Do y'all know that the big part of why God sent his son to die for us it's not because of the evil stuff we do, but the potential God knows is in us. God see the good in you, even when you are demonstrating. Go ahead and read. Rejoice in that and in it too. I just say, listen, it doesn't take pleasure in what's wrong. I am mindful. Y'all listen, this is real. Love, the love that I have for God, the way God demonstrated love, love doesn't take pleasure or rejoice in iniquity. So whatever is wrong, and I see folk do that wrong, I take no pleasure in that. Now here's what I'm telling you. I don't mark what folk do that ain't right. Act like there's some kind of glory in that. If folk wrong, they wrong, I don't want no part of it. You don't hear me. I have heard a hundred times over how folk try to talk like folk of the world. Y'all know how folk, y'all ever been around folk that cuss? And then Christians don't cuss, but we try to sound like this. I'm like, what in the world are we doing? Wait a minute, what he said, love, what he says, Rejoice is not in iniquity. It doesn't rejoice in iniquity. Don't take pleasure in the wrong that I see other folks do. We don't take pleasure in that. Watch what he says. Keep reading. But rejoice in the truth. He said, but the opposite. We rejoice in truth. Not in wrong. I don't glory. I don't want to glorify what folks do. We live in a society where communication is big time and we hear everything, all kind of stuff being said. And what we don't want to do as the people of God is model that wrong model. God will model for us the right thing. We are to model for the world the right thing. But he said, this. Bear it all things. Bear stuff. Love him, What he said, it bears all things. Believe it all Believe things. All things. Open. It's the good in you. I see the good in you. Believe it all things. What he said? Open Hope it all, all things. But endure, it all, endure things. all things. 
go through stuff. That's the only way we can. Listen, y'all know now. Think about that and, and think about God's love toward you and all those things that apply. This is how God loves us. And then what God really wants is for us to love each other. And then this last thing he says, verse 8, he says what? Love never fails. It never ends. Huh? What did he say? Love never fails. It doesn't end. It doesn't end. It doesn't give up on us. God doesn't give up on us. And maybe we ought not give up on each other. Man. God, listen, God, God loved us so much, y'all. The great love, the real great love story is how God loved man. And the continuation of that love story is how we demonstrate that for man. Let me give you this last thing. John, John chapter 13, in verse number 34, is Jesus teaching his disciples. Jesus teaching his disciples, listen, God commended his love. What God did for us uh, is God demonstrated his love. You know, can I just tell you, we ought to take opportunity to do stuff for each other. And we ought to, we ought to, you know, we ought to be looking for opportunity to help each other. Looking for opportunity to be able to be good to each other. But what we, we got to be careful as Christians because what we, we're major in all the stuff the world does. Well, I heard so and so say something, and I ain't going to tell, I ain't going to say nothing to him, but I ain't going to fool with him. be looking for opportunity to do good to each other. Looking for moments to help, even if it's just, if I just go out of my way for you, just a little thing, or if I can just call you and just offer and say, hey, I just called just to give you a word of encouragement. Little opportunity to help each other, but not be like the world. And Jesus teaching his disciples in verse number 34, John 13, the Bible says what? A new commandment I give unto you. Jesus tells the disciples, a new commandment I give you. What is that? That you love one another. And it's not that love, because love is already there. He said that you love one another. What he said? As I have loved you. See, what he's really telling me is he said, I don't just want you to love. I want you to love the way I love. I want you to love each other the way I love you. Anybody ever been rubbed wrong? Somebody rubbed you wrong? Can I tell you the thing that helped you get over this love? And the thing that, see, the, the, the balance. But one of the things I, I say all the time is that just like the world, because we are human, there are times when things ain't gonna go right and 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 and, 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 and somebody un even unintentionally might say the wrong thing do, but we still love each other because we do it all the time and God still loves us. How do we demonstrate for the world that we are like God is how we love each other and then how we love the world. God so loved the world. New commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. The sacrificial love that God made for us. Willing to go out of our way. Willing to sacrifice for somebody else. Ain't nothing in it for me. That's love of God. To be able to love like God, even if I don't get nothing in return. Hey, we gotta take it. We have to take the lesson from God on how to love. The world taught us a different way, but what we really want to love, the way we really want to love, is the way God loves. 
Floyd Weaver says that. That you love one another. That you love one another. Floyd Weaver. By this shall all men know. By this shall all men know. What? That you are my disciples. How? If you have loved one for another. God, I just want to encourage you this morning. Great love story. It's God's love for man. God's love for us. God demonstrated that love for us. It is John, it is 1 John 1, 18. It said, my little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. It's a demonstration of love. Have you, have you been able to demonstrate to people that you love? Or are you just talking? Opportunity to be able to demonstrate for the world the great love we have. That we love like God. Listen, it, 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 it's the thing that impressed people that you are willing to love them. And they don't care nothing about you. That, you, that you're willing to, to, to offer them whatever it is in the moment, some kind of help or whatever, to do something good for them, even if they don't even say thank you. It's about being able to love like God. Not an easy thing. But it is a self-sacrificial thing. Be able to love like God. You see, Jesus came to his own, his own receiving him, rejected by his own faith. Most people will never accept God, but yet he's still loved. And I encourage you, let's love like God. Let's, let's model the love of God for the world, that they can see God love through us. To be able to to shine a light in the world of darkness. Y'all, I just want to encourage you. The real great love story is God's love for man and how God loved us. And we ought to model that for the world. I pray God blesses you. I pray God help us that we keep striving to be more for him. That we keep striving to be more like him and less like him. This morning, if you're here, you're not a Christian. You ought to be one. Hear the message of God that he sent Jesus from heaven to die for your sins. He was buried. The third day he rose again. Believe that. Believe that he did that for you. Then be willing to repent of your sins. Put your way now and take on God's word. And confess, stand before man and say, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. That confession brought death to us. It'll bring life everlasting to you. Submit to being buried in baptism with him for the remission of your sin. All of your sins will be washed away. You become a new creature in Christ. Live faith unto death. And you will receive a crown of life. If you're a Christian, but you haven't been all that God would have you to be, I want to encourage you to repent. Confess, we'll pray with you and for you. God will forgive you and all of us together keep working out our soul salvation. So if you stand in need, we actually make it known. Together we stand and together we stand. There's a fountain prepared for you and me. Let us Will you come?
S. It's good when you're saying it, huh? Yes, I just wanted to make that remark for praying for my son here. He came home yesterday from the hospital and, and he walked on the walk. So uh, he's doing good. And for my sister, uh, she had her eye surgery and uh, she's doing well also. So continue to pray for her. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, dear Father in heaven, Father, we bow before you this morning to give you thanks for all your great blessings. Father, the blessing you shared upon us, even when we were not deserved. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for all the things you've done and continue to do, and all the things you know you will know continue to do. We ask your blessing. Father, we pray for Eric, Father. We, we thank you that you've blessed him thus far. And he has gone back home. And, and as he continues, Father, to regain his full health, bless him, be with him. We're thankful, Father, for what you've done thus far. And we pray, Father, that you be who you have and bless them as they be a source of help, and support, and strength to him. In his journey back to 100%. We pray, Father, for my sister, that you will continue to bless her and all might continue to go well with her. And she recovers also from surgery. Father, we just pray that, that we might, that we be mindful that as you be blessed us, yes. and that we continue to lean and depend upon you. Father, we thank you. And we pray your continued blessings through Jesus, who died that we might live. Amen. Amen.
in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 starting at verse 23 For I have received the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus Christ the same night in which he he was betrayed to break his and when he had given thanks, he prayed it and said, Take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, after the same manner, he reached up and said, Same matter, he also took the cup. And he supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you, you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death for the cup. Wherefore, whosoever eats this bread and drink this cup, Unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine the death. And, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. But he that eat and drink unworthily eat and drink damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let's do thanks. Thank you for all the blessings you Thank you for my Thank you for the Good. 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 And <clears throat> thank you to our 
God for giving us this time to assemble together. Uh, 
we are planning to have a state youth conference. So put that on your, in your mind, and uh, I'll give you information as we obtain. All right, it's been a good day. Good again to see everybody. Good to have you here, and I pray God blesses throughout this week. All right, um, so again, this told me so. This is, I just kind of give you an update. Uh, at the land, um, we are we, we're, we're praying for dry weather. Uh, the, the the plumbers are running all of the pipe, everything in the ground under the slab that needs to be ran for plumbing, everything for the bathrooms, uh, the sinks, everything, the kitchen, everything, all the plumbing has to be ran. And they are working on getting all of that ran. And the backside where the fellowship hall and the bathroom and the kitchen is, they ran all that. They have to dig trenches to dig, to dig the hole and run the pipe. And, but when they do that, they got to put all the pipe in and then test it. So it has to be dry. They were able to do that. Monday, they, they finished. If you can pass by there, you look, you'll see pipes sticking up. All of those have been approved. They, all of it done, got it approved, covered it back up. On the front side where the auditorium is, a couple of bathrooms up there, they got to run those pipes. And they were doing that Monday when it started raining. It's been raining since. Now they dug all those trenches. So I went out there yesterday to see how dry it was. And all those trenches they dug, they full of water. The whole thing, all the way up to the top. So I guess they're going to have to pump it out. But well, anyway, as soon as that can dry, because as you know, you watch the weather, it's supposed to rain again Tuesday. So as soon as we can have a period of dry weather, they can start, they can finish the front side, run it all the pipe. And when they do, once they test it, it's approved, cover it up, then they can pour the foundation. So we're that close, but we just need to dry it up. Now, in the meantime, most of you know we got a big sinkhole out there. And, uh, and so we've been working on trying to get someone to do that. And so, but again, I'm in touch with someone that what we think is out there right now, taking care of. So if you pay by that, you see a bulldozer out there, then they are taking care of that sinkhole today. So we are, we're moving forward, everything is. Uh, going well, it's just a matter of you know getting the dry weather that we can get. And once we once we um, get the foundation for it, then you'll see structures start coming up. And so hopefully that'll happen within the next few weeks that we can actually get some dry weather and uh, be able to finish the work. All right, so keep praying for the effort, and uh, we'll update you. Uh, as we uh, move forward and have something to share with you. All right? Again, hey, appreciate all of you. Appreciate you being here. And I pray God's blessing upon us throughout this week and then throughout our lives. Amen. Amen. If you will, let us be standing and listen to the closing song. And then we we'll have a closing song. Page 882, no tears in heaven. 882. No tears in heaven, no sorrow to God, all will be glory in the day. There'll be no sadness, all will be gladness when we shall call the happy man. No tears, no tears up there, no sorrow, and bring it all at home, and there'll be no tears, and never no tears, no tears up there, no 
Say thank you, Father, for the Son of King Jesus. Yes. Father, help them realize they're going to take the time to look at them. We know you've got to go to those babies again and again, part of the long spot. Father, we really realize we're living in a dangerous time, Lord. But we know that your God bless us. Forgive us for our sins, we God. Let your God be with us to continue to go to this week, Father. Let your God have work in our soul. Father, as you God speak to you, look down and have heard the those that you say by our prayer. Tell us, Father, as you God, teach us how to love one another. Yeah. Teach us how to love ourselves, Father. Yes. Mercy God, we know that you are an apple maker. Get it in, right in the morning, God. As you God, magnify our name. Thank you for your prayer. Amen. 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 Amen.